presented exclusively by Mother's Polish. Welcome back to a special midweek episode of the Slipstream Podcast. We just finished our weekly F122 Race League on PlayStation in Monza. Congrats on another win, Austin. Austin's been dominating this year, but we've had a lot of fun. So we we do a Twitch race every week. So if you are curious about tuning in, feel free. We uh, especially weeks that there is a Formula One race on the calendar, we like to go ahead and get ourselves out on the track and have some fun. Cole, I know you had a short race this week, so sorry about that, buddy. I don't want to talk about it. Let's move on. What happened? It was Monza. It's straight line. Uh, back end came out a few times. I'm really not pleased about what happened last night. I, I, I watched broadcast mode the entire time of Austin dominating people, so I'm over it already. It wasn't so cut and dry. I was in 18th on lap 7. Yeah, he had to, uh, you know, finish the race with what seventy four percent tire wear, cutting it close to a little puncture tire, Lewis Hamilton Silverstone action. Yeah, it's real bad. So, anyways, for this midweek episode, we wanted to produce and introduce some basic Formula One one on one topics for maybe those listeners who are just getting into Formula One, and then we'll preview on those race weekends the upcoming race for this week, which is in Monza, Italy. And so we figured for this first midweek sort of F1 101 episode, we would start with the name of this podcast, The Slipstream. You may have heard that a lot, not only in the name, but when we talk about the race, a lot of moves are made, you know, using the slipstream. So what the heck is a slipstream, Stan? Um, to the uh, American listeners, it is a draft. Um, so you are very familiar probably in hearing the NASCAR terminology of draft. Um, it's when the car in front of you is just pushing the air out of the way. Um, and with less resistance on the car, you drive faster. It doesn't have to push as hard. So um, if, you, uh, if you're ever on like a long uh, interstate trip, hop behind a semi and you feel the car just faster, it's the same thing. It's just uh, a little bit different for a race car. For those of you, and a lot of it has to do with those of you yeah, driving right now. Cool. If you're driving right now, do not get really close to an 18 wheeler. You have to get really it works close. To like feel it works drive. like four or five car lengths away. You're fine. <laughs> yeah, I think on the highway we're used to being in the dirty air more so than maybe the slipstream of a semi. So, uh, well advised tip there, Cole. Um, but yeah, so the slipstream is used quite a bit, especially if you're new to Formula One and you're watching the races. It, it seems like each circuit has a couple of straightaways where not only the cars have the opportunity to utilize the strip slipstream, uh, but the digital, uh, the drag reduction system uh, actually helps that as well. It gives the uh, cars an extra, I don't know, 18 kilometers per hour within that slipstream uh, to get a little bit closer and ultimately to make an overtake in Formula One. So it's definitely a crucial uh, piece of racing. Um, you know, not only for F1, but to, to Stin's point in NASCAR and all of probably motorsports to some degree. I, I would imagine there's a smaller slipstream in motorcycle racing, but I don't know that for sure. I mean, there's one in bike, like in cycling. I would imagine there's probably one in swimming too, right? You get behind the guy who's chopped through that wavy water, then mm -hmm. you hop right in line and, and take advantage of it. I know. You know, Stin, are there other advantages not only from the top end speed, but things like tire deg? Um, because it's using less maybe power in the engine or what have you that maybe the slipstream has multiple advantages, not just that top line speed. So it's it's kind of a catch-22. So if you're in the slipstream, um, you uh, aren't getting as much air against the car, and air is usually what helps cool a car. So your car is probably running warmer um, to counteract that to gain a little bit of benefit. Um, you can either turn the engine mode down because it's not having to work as hard, um, you can also probably lift and coast a little bit earlier um, to help with fuel saving. So if you're kind of stuck in a slipstream for a little bit, um, you can gain a lasting benefit um, as long as like your car has the performance to be able to overtake. I know that 
Um, you had mentioned DRS, which kind of goes with um, a slipstream, but you know, a lot of these tracks, they say that you need a second to a second and a half to overtake a car that's in front of you. Um, and some of the cars just don't have that performance. So they get stuck in a slipstream chain where, you know, if you think that there's a, there's three cars in a row, the first one's punching through the air. The second one has less resistance. The third one has even less resistance. So as, if, if those cars behind don't have the top speed to get around that car, they're stuck there for a majority of the race. Yeah, another term that's used pretty often during a Formula One broadcast, and if you think back to the race in France, is also a tow. You're basically, the, the car in front is pulling the car behind by punching the hole in the air, right? There's been a couple examples this year in qualifying where, was it Leclerc towed Carlos Sainz around, what, turn 11 at the French Grand Prix and really gave his teammate, you know, that that advantage around a pretty quick part of the track. So another another term that is frequently used on the broadcast to talk about a slipstream is, is also that tow. So yeah, that's, that's sort of the, the first F1 101 term. It's, it's obviously a very important part of Formula One racing is the slipstream. Uh, and it's near and dear to our hearts as being the name of our podcast. So wanted to take the time to kind of you know, simplify some of the racing terms. If you're just getting into Formula One, you're turning in to an F1 race for maybe the first or second time, and you hear all of these terms throughout a broadcast, uh, we'll see what we can do to help you guys understand what's going on and and how it's important to the racing. So now we'll just spend a few minutes just looking ahead. Uh, we are on the third of the back-to-back -back race weekends. Uh, after the summer break, we had the return of Formula One after summer break in Belgium at Spa. And this past week, we had a pretty entertaining race as well uh, in Zandvoort in the Netherlands. So, Cole, uh, I know you're a big Monza fan after tonight's uh, F122 league race. So tell us a little bit about Monza. Historic track. It's been around in F1 uh, since almost the beginning. Uh, they've gone through different variations of the track. It's uh, currently, it, you, it was the fastest track on the circuit up until last year when they added Saudi Arabia. Expect... Uh, a lot, I mean, it's the, it's the temple of speed, expect lots of speed, uh, lots of overtakes uh, towards probably midfield and back uh, up front. I feel like there really are not that many overtakes. Once you get out front, if you can stay out there like Max, who's going to, and going to dominate this race, um, you will probably run away, but it's been around a long time. Uh, it is the home track for Ferrari. They run a special livery this week. It's the, actually the home track for Alpha Tauri as well. Shout out to Pierre Gasly, who won a couple seasons ago. Um, but yeah, been around a long time. Really excited for the Temple of Speed and fully expect Max to do what he's been doing the past few races. Just crush everybody. Yeah, so Matt, I want to get your thoughts on Ferrari. I know there's been a lot of uh, uh, poor moments, some, some underwhelming performance, especially coming out of summer break. You thought that some of the issues they had maybe before summer break would have been resolved. During summer break, this is their home race. Um, you know, I know the last few years, if you've been watching Drive to Survive, there's clearly a lot of pressure for them to perform well at Monza, and they haven't done so yet. Uh, what do you think about their chances this week at their home race? I don't like them. I mean, if we're just going to be blunt about it, uh, as Jordan says, it's the Temple of Speed. Uh, they don't have that top end speed. They're probably at best fifth you know, the fifth fastest constructor right now. And especially with the, these long straights that Monza has, I just don't see how they can keep up with, uh, the Red Bulls, uh, the Mercedes who's added speed to theirs. Um, and even, even like an Alpine who's faster than them as well. It's going to be tough for them. I think the one thing about Monza, at least the last couple of years, is there has been a surprise winner. Uh, Cole, you mentioned it two years ago. My boy Pierre Gasly got his first career win in Formula One in a surprise race over what Carlos Sainz in P2 when he was with McLaren. Uh, held him off. And then last year, McLaren got a little bit of revenge with Danny Rick winning his one and only race with McLaren. Followed very closely on some team orders. Stan, I don't know if you recall that, but some team orders with Lando. Uh, who's been hunting his first career win. Uh, so it's nice to see a little bit of um, you know variability. I think last year's was unique. I don't know if you want to touch on this, where Max almost killed Lewis by landing on top of his car in a, in a, in a rough battle down towards the first chicane. 
Uh, but it's been good to see some new winners or surprise winners at Monza the last couple of years. I think the, Max said it pretty well. That's what you get when you don't leave space. Like, was he talking about space between his car and Lewis's head? Yeah. Uh, uh, they, they were both out of position. It was interesting. Uh, you know, bad, bad pit stop. You know, Lewis was stuck behind a DRS train. It, it was unfortunate. But it's the cool thing about Monza. It's, it's as you guys have hit on it. There's been two kind of out of character winners. I think those might have been the only two other than Archon. Um, like the only two wins in the last two years of cars that weren't the top two or three constructors. Well, in terms of constructors, do you see any um, sort of surprise constructors maybe having a shot this week with the with the type of track that Monza is? I mean, I'm not going to say a shot. I would say Mercedes definitely locks up two and the maybe the three spot, maybe two and four. I, I do expect Mercedes on the podium. I do not expect Ferrari on the podium at all this weekend. I fully expect one strategy blunder and then another just Ferrari call. Um <laughs> Yep. I, I think Williams will be fast in a straight line. I think McLaren will be fast in a straight line. I think Alpine will be fast in a straight line. But I think that Max Verstappen wins every single race until the end of the season. Every one. Yeah, it's hard to argue that. Ferrari, I think the only way Ferrari comes out is if Ferrari... If you look at years past, the the wing is nearly non-existent. If they create some special wing that always shows up at, you know, at Monza, um, I think they might have a chance. And that would actually also um, foreshadow how Mexico looks. Oh, I'm sorry. No, Mexico, they use a massive wing because they're down, low down force. My, my apologies. But yeah, like they always... They always have a, a, a crazy small wing. It looks like the DRS doesn't even open. Like There's no mechanism. It's so tiny. You want to talk about foreshadowing. Ferrari bringing the yellow driver suits to the track. I'm going to go ahead and say those are yellow flags uh, and that Ferrari does not finish in the top five, either driver. <laughs> yeah, Matt, you don't think the yellow, um, what is it, Minions? track suits that they'll have and the little yellow flare on their uh, special livery for this week is going to make them any faster? No, not at all. I mean, it doesn't even make them look better. So um, it's, uh, you know, red is typically the color that car makes cars look faster that stand out more. And they're going to uh, a hideous yellow, um, but good for them. You know, it, a hideous drive hideous color for a hideous race form yeah red also is a color of car that for some reason costs you more in car insurance uh, i don't know if it's because it looks fast or what but random they're fun fact for those who aren't here in america well, let's just do some quick picks we'll wrap it up quickly this week just a quick f1 101 tip and then um kind of the quick look ahead so obviously we start with uh fp1 and two here on friday qualifying on saturday as always uh, I can start with the picks. I think, yeah, Cole, I agree. I don't see Max losing perhaps the rest of the season without some sort of maybe engine failure or something that out of his control, right? Um, I think he runs away with it. I think the Red Bull obviously is quick in a straight line. It's got a lot of versatility um, in terms of it doesn't really seem to matter what track uh, it goes to. It performs well. So I think I might go, um, I'm going to go Max 1, Checo 2, and I'll go Lewis to round out the podium. Yeah, I, I would probably say, I, I, no doubt, Max one. I'm going to go Lewis to George Russell three. Uh, I think Checo will finish in the top five, but I think Mercedes will pick up some speed this week and they will put it to Ferrari and slowly close that gap in the constructors. I'm like Jordan. I, I've got Max. I've got and Max first and then two Mercedes, but I've got him flipped. I've got George two, uh, Lewis three. And I'll do Max, uh, Checo, George. So a little bit of variance there in it. Um, but I will put two of the Williams and Alpines in the top six. I like that goal. What is the highest we think a Ferrari finishes then? 
Nobody had them in their top three. What's fifth. the highest that they finish? Charles fifth. I'll say four. I'll say Charles gets fourth. Something will happen. Somebody will DNF. Somebody will. I mean, the one thing about Monza too, um, for those that will see it for the first time this weekend, is that there's a very long front stretch, front straightaway, and a very tight chicane. That's where we talked about the incident between Max and Lewis last year. So. Yeah, there could be mayhem in the first two corners, and there's also years where people just blow straight through because, yeah, it, it comes at you pretty quickly. So we haven't seen a whole lot of chaos in turn one this year. I'm not I'm not saying I want it, but there's a, a pretty good chance that we may see, you know, a, a wing dinged up here or there in turn one that could, you know, put the race upside down. So yeah, not a whole love for Ferrari this week. A lot of love for Max, as always. That'll probably be the theme of every race moving forward. But yeah, that's it. We wanted to come at you guys midweek, especially race weeks, to you know get you up to speed on the world of Formula One a little bit, uh, as well as preview the upcoming race. So thanks for tuning in to our short midweek episode. And as always, we'll come back at you on Mondays with a race recap and all the happenings in Formula One. Talk to you soon.